Hello, all my friends across the South. This is John Felt, and this is the Weekly Water Outlook. Well, this was the jet stream pattern last week. This is a slide from last week, and I told you about the sort of oddball upper low that would be drifting your way and bring some welcome rain, and indeed, you got some welcome rain in most areas. Now, I'm sure a few of you are saying, where was that rain? You didn't get as much, or you didn't get much at all but a very widespread part of Texas and parts of Oklahoma received a very welcome rain over the last week. Now, if we look at the current jet stream pattern, uh, what we see here is we do see the jet stream, and this is indicated by the shaded colors, is beginning to sink south. We're going to be going into a significant pattern change. That area of low pressure that I talked about, here it is right here. It's still sort of sitting out there. It's very weak. It really hasn't uh, done a lot anymore, and the precipitation from it has uh, definitely slowed down um, as far as what's occurring. So I think that's pretty much out of the picture. I did want to mention right now, I don't see anything um, at all in the tropics. It's very quiet. You can see uh, even coming off of Africa, not much at all. So it, it does indeed look, uh, at least into the foreseeable future, uh, both in the Gulf um, and across uh, the Atlantic, pretty quiet type conditions. So here's the uh, good news I was talking about last week. Uh, some of you, I heard that you received three or four inches of rain. Um, I know I have a cluster of um, subscribers right there around Dallas, and look at that. Boy, red, five inches of rain, purple, even an estimate of closer to 10, uh, yellow, two inches of rain. So if you're in that area, uh, generally right in here, you can see you received a very significant rain, and I wouldn't say by any means drought busting, but man, it came at right at the right amount of time and the amounts were certainly a lot to make a difference. On the other hand, look at the sh very, you know, from right here to right here, it goes from nearly five inches of rain down to less than a half inch of rain. So uh, definitely uh, a variance, but this is one of the more widespread rains I've seen for quite some time. So definitely welcome. Now, if we look at the percent of normal over the last uh, 30 days, um, actually this was the past seven days, um, this is indicating four to six times normal rainfall uh, over a pretty large part of the area. Look at this here, again, pretty large area here uh, received this rain. Um, so if you're in that area, you had a pretty soaking rain and I'm gonna be talking about how um, it looks like that's gonna change back uh, to drier weather, so hopefully uh, that did occur this week because you're going to need it because we're getting going back to dry. As far as a surplus or deficit, the uh, blues are two inches or more excess rain for the week. Purple is four inches or more, um, and we even had up to eight inches in a very isolated spot. Now the precipitation anomalies so far for July, uh, even though we're getting somewhat towards the end of July, look at this. Um, we actually came back up to fairly close to normal with that precipitation. So one event really made a big difference as far as July precipitation. Now I always get a little bit cautious with these one events, and the reason why is a lot of that rain, uh, or some of that rain, really were he had a lot of runoff. It'd be better to get more of a moderate rain over many days. Um, certainly we'll take it, but and it does show up here on the image, but I think that might make it look a little bit better than it really is. Number of rain days, and this is uh, shows you, even though we had quite a bit of rain last week, the number of rain days over the last 30 days um, was generally only in the four to six. So we had that one event there, and other than that, it's been dry, and it's going to remain dry. Now the evaporative stress index this shows the stress on crops. Um, you can see that uh, we have quite a bit of red and that's the biggest deviation from neutral conditions. So we are having these pockets of evaporative stress index and it would have been a lot worse uh, if we wouldn't have received the more recent rain. Now the jet stream this week is going to be dipping from the upper Midwest um, down and we're getting back into an amplified flow pattern. And this type of amplified flow pattern, you might remember it, it wasn't that long ago that we had this, late June into early July. Uh, you probably don't like to hear me say this, but the amplitude is going to build that ridge in the west, dig a trough in the east. The south is going to be in the border between that, but I think you're going to be dominated more by that ridge of high pressure, and that's going to bring drier weather to most of the area. Now, Texas in particular is going to be dominated by the high. I think. Uh, parts of Kansas could be right on that borderline and initially get much more of the impact from the area of lower pressure. 
That's why the forecast for the next seven days shows very wet conditions over parts of Kansas, Missouri, um, very dry conditions over Texas, and Oklahoma is right in that gradient. Uh, so it's going to go from uh, very wet in here to very dry down here over a fairly short period of time. And that's going to be the pattern this week because this area here is going to be associated with the upper jet stream energy. This area is not going to be uh, impacted by that. Now I did put the long-term soil moisture anomalies, the dry areas in brown. I wanted to overlay the heaviest rain, highest confidence in blue, and the lesser confidence in white, more the moderate rain. And I did want to show you that at least right now with this precipitation forecast, this could bring some significant uh, enhancements of precipitation to where it's really needed for long-term drought over western parts and central parts of Kansas, parts of uh, Nebraska, parts of Oklahoma, um, but then further south than that, uh, really not nearly as much. So this area here, if this rainfall does uh, forecast does work, work out right in here, could be a welcome rain um, for long-term drought conditions, and that's the soil moisture in brown. So the takeaway, a significant shift in the jet pattern. We're getting back to that amplitude, amplified type flow. Looks like it's back to dry weather over Texas. Kansas will be wetter this week. I did want to say I looked at some of the longer term models, and especially for Texas, um, I think we're going into a multi-week dry pattern. Week two right now actually looks drier than week one, and dry, week one looks dry. So I think we're going right now into August, um, first week of August, uh, with well below normal precipitation in Texas. And then uh, sort of that gradient where better chances in Kansas especially this week, and then maybe dropping off on week two. Nice talking to you once again. I will be updating this in another week.